Hello guys, this is Jackal. This is my E3 2016 Top 10 list. There's a lot of circulation of hype going around E3 right now, so let's get into it. Number 10, Dishonored 2. Dishonored was a fantastic game when first released. I enjoyed the aspects of escape and somewhat horror when you walk the streets of Dunwall as the skillful and lethal Corvo. This time around we're playing as Emily, who in the last game we tried to save. Looks like the tables have turned. Our objective is to take back what's yours and finish what our savior Corvo started. I'm excited to see the new enemies and the new abilities given to Emily when we play this game November 11th. Number 9, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. It's easy to say that I'm a huge Tom Clancy video game fan. Not to say that his books aren't just as good, but I don't read. Reading sucks. Just kidding. I've fallen in love with most of his games, from Splinter Cell to Rainbow Six. I love the sandbox aspect that you and your friends can use to your advantage. Ghost Recon Wildlands looks like a game that has endless possibilities and countless hours of fun to be had with you and your squad of friends. From full on attack routes to stealthy recon missions, we're looking at the epitome of Ghost Recon. Number 8, Xbox Live Preview Games. There's a lot of talk about the Xbox Live Preview games coming out in the coming years and I'd be a fool if I didn't have at least 15 that I was looking forward to. There are too many on here to make separate descriptions about, so I'll keep them all in the confines of number 8 on my list. Xbox Live has grown a lot over the years, and one of my favorite things that they've implemented was the use of Xbox Live Preview. This allows players to play games that we only thought we'd have to buy a $4,000 supercomputer to play. From DayZ to the freshly released We Happy Few, the horizons of new games to play seems infinite. I'm excited to get my hands on all of these games when they release accordingly. Number 7, South Park The Fractured But Whole. <laughs> South Park, probably one of the funniest shows that is still running today, and their games are no different. Starting with The Stick of Truth, Matt Stone and Trey Parker have really outdone themselves with putting their show at the fingertips of players. You actually feel as though you're in your own episode of South Park. Original voice actors and lovable characters we've grown to know and love through the years. All of these are just small reasons why this game is so much fun to play. No knee is safe from slapping when this game releases December 6th. Number 6. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard This game is very interesting to say the least. The game is not what we're used to coming from Resident Evil. Things seem weird. Different. I can't seem to put my finger- HOLY SHIT HE'S DEAD! Resident Evil really changed the game. Like, really changed it. I've never actually been this frightened from a demo since PT, and a lot of people are going to find some similarities in the two. I find this to be a great path for Resident Evil to take, and the people of Capcom are ready to make us all shit ourselves when the game releases early 2017. Number 5. Friday the 13th, The Game. You want to talk about horror? How about Jason motherfucking Voorhees? Friday the 13th is being created into a horror slash escape game, and I couldn't be any more excited about it. You can play as either Jason himself, or a camp counselor. One of the coolest things about this game is that the developers of the game tried to make it as authentic as possible. From hiring Kane Hodder, one of the actors who played Jason himself in the movies, to getting the actual music from the films. Get ready to kill some horny campgoers when this game releases this summer. Number 4, Sea of Thieves. I've never really been interested in a pirate life. However, 
Rare has decided to change that for me. Hard. Sea of Thieves is a first-person, swashbuckling, ale-drinking pirate MMORPG game. At E3, on top of the trailer they released, they showed off a gameplay demo with three teams fighting each other on their ships, trying to sink the enemies. The gameplay looked like a blast. <laughs> and I could imagine myself and my group of friends working to make our ship the biggest and baddest there is on the Seven Seas. It looks very hopeful with customization options and treasure to be found. I'm excited to get out there on the ocean when the game releases. Number 3, Planet Coaster. Now this is very strange. A PC game on my list? What? Planet Coaster grabbed the hell out of me at E3. I'm into those kind of SimCity, Roller Coaster Tycoon kind of games, and this game doesn't steer far from that at all. You get to build your own theme park, name it, create roller coasters of crazy proportions. I just love the time management, the options to create what I want, when I want, and to feel accomplished when I have all of those happy park people spending their cash at my theme park. I'll be looking to give thrills when this game comes out. Number 2. Scalebound When Scalebound was demoed at E3, I lost my shit. When I first heard about it, I was kind of skeptical. I mean, who wouldn't be when a game promises giant dragon fights and all that yes? Watching the game demo put all ounces of doubt away in my mind. Seeing that you were able to bound together with your friends online and take out the biggest enemies I've seen since Dark Souls makes this game a little more worth it. Observing the other characters with all of their customized beasts and different personalities made me really want to get into that game at that moment. I'm a huge sucker for games that allow me to make my own route and decisions, and when it comes to making a partner or a class. So when this game flies into stores, I'll be right there waiting to pick it up. Number 1. Battlefield 1 I tried. I really did, okay? I wanted to put something else on top because it's way too cliche for me to put an FPS online game on my list at number 1. However, I couldn't bring myself to not do it. I'm overly hyped about Battlefield 1. Watching the gameplay sold me right away. From the giant zeppelins to the awesome melee, the sights, the sounds... Ugh. I couldn't handle it. The game looks absolutely beautiful, bringing players back to World War 1. And with a lot of games bringing up the past, it can cause some problems. How will the guns work? How many guns will they put into the game? How can you make the game different than every other World War 1 game out there today? I didn't think they could, but they did. All of those questions were asked with an hour-long gameplay session with some of Hollywood and YouTube stars. I watched on as I saw c nanners taking out people with a sniper or Terry Crews mowing people down with new tanks. With a multiplayer this good, I can't wait to see how they're able to make the single player. Grab your shovels and hop into the trenches when this game releases October 21st. So there you have it guys, E3 2016 top 10 list, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you guys have a game that you guys are excited for, put it down in the comments. Also, while you're there, go ahead and check out my friends' E3 top 10 lists. We have CoolSci, Cyber and Brandon, and Fivester all making their lists right now, and it's right there. Go click those links right over there, it'll be somewhere over there. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.